Hello everybody, it's Mike here, Game from Scratch, and GDC a wound down just a few weeks ago, and probably one of the most prominent discussion points at GDC this year was real-time ray tracing. Now, one of the major problems with real-time ray tracing is you need to have a GTX 2060, 2070, or 2080 card or better to support it. And frankly, one game engine supports ray tracing right now. A couple weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago, Unreal Engine 4.22 was released with ray tracing. Now, I could not demonstrate this to you because I have a 1080 and a 1050, and that's kind of problematic because you need to have a 20 series card, or at least you used to. So as of just a few days ago, um, NVIDIA released a new set of drivers. So on April the 11th, there is now a set of drivers available for GeForce cards. And if you go to the release highlights, you will see include support for DXR or DirectX ray tracing on GTX 1066 gigabytes or higher. So my 1050 is still screwed. But what about that 1080? And more importantly, and what we are gonna look at answering in this video, will it work with Unreal Engine 4.22? Now you're not gonna get full blown RTX support or um, DXR support just simply because um, you know, you don't have the dedicated hardware that was built in there, but you can now potentially make games that take advantage of at least parts of real-time ray tracing. So that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at enabling um, DXR or real-time ray tracing in uh, the Unreal Engine 4.22 and see how it works. And the answer is, a bit of a spoiler, it works, but we might run into some problems. All right, so let's jump through the workflow. First off, you're gonna need some kind of a scene to update. I've taken this one. Um, it's one of the out-of-the-box scenes made available from Epic Games. It's just a, a lit room, nothing really magical going on. It's not a really complex scene by any means. And now what we're going to do is ray traceify it. And that's a word, look it up. Anyways, go to edit and then go to project settings. And this is a bit of a multi-step process. Then you're going to come on down and locate rendering like so. Once you have located rendering, you head on down here and you select ray tracing once we get to it and click yes now ray tracing has another dependency which is enabling skin cache and you just go ahead and say yep i want to do that as well and you'll notice down here a restart is required so we'll do a restart later and we'll shut this down and the reason why i'm doing restart later is because there is one more setting to take care of so we're going to shut down unreal like so and close this guy out and what you want to do is go to the epic game launcher you want to go to your extension for Unreal Engine, like this guy right here. We're gonna click it and create a shortcut. This will immediately create a shortcut on your desktop, such as this guy right here. You're going to right click it, go to properties, and then you'll have the target here, which is basically a path to the executable. What you wanna do is add dash DX12 to the end. So that will enable it to run in DirectX 12 mode. And then go ahead and launch Unreal Engine using that new shortcut. So now we are launching Unreal Engine to use the uh, in development DirectX 12 rendering. Um, and this is going to potentially take a bit of time. So we'll let this one come in. We're gonna go ahead and open. So this is the one I just converted over. We'll let this run. And now here is something to be aware of. Depending on your scene, you may actually experience a driver crash at this point. I have experienced driver crashes over and over and over again with certain scenes and it has worked just fine with other scenes. So do know this is not a flawless experience. There you go, so there you've experienced it. Uh, so the video driver crashed and was reset. Make sure they are up to date. So as I said, this is going to be a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, we'll go ahead and try and launch that guy again. Da, da, da. Bum, bum, bum. And I will actually go with the one that I converted and I know runs for sure. It will also potentially save us. It's that same scene. Um, so this one has real-time ray tracing already enabled. And hopefully we don't get a driver crash this time. Now I have experienced it where the driver crashes and I just click OK and run it again. It runs just fine. And then I have other scenes where it blows up and breaks and spectacularly doesn't work. So your mileage may vary here. Oh, this is this is great. All right, let's close the setting. And let's try it one more time. I may require a reboot. So I'm going to pause it until we get success. Nope, no reboot required, this time it worked. So as I mentioned, and I'm glad that it actually experienced that way, your experience with this on 10 series cards running in Unreal Engine are going to be problematic. Like you saw, I experienced a couple of crashes of my video card on the way, hopefully over time, as new drivers are brought out for the Nvidia cards, it will get better and better. Now, once again, it's 1060, 1070, and 1080 that are supported now, and I assume the 1650 RTX card. Um, so now here we are. This is um, DXR mode, uh, sorry, DX12 mode running Unreal Engine, and you can now work with ray tracing. So how do you actually work with ray tracing? It's actually pretty simple to be honest. So let's say 
Actually, I added one in the scene right here. There's there's a light somewhere around here. Yeah, let me just search for it. It's a point light, so let me just search for point. I think this is the one I created right here. Point light, yeah, so there it is right there. So just create objects in your world and compatible objects will have direct ray trace settings. So you see here, uh, we are in the light. We can configure ray tracing on here through various different settings in here, such as ray trace distance field shadows and um, ray tracing samples per pixel. Um, there are also in actors, you have interact with ray tracing as an option there. Uh, we have other properties here that can be set just a second. So as you saw here, our light here in the scene, this guy, uh, it can be configured to have ray trace settings. Uh, skylights can be configured to have ray trace settings. Uh, if we come over here, Envir, helps us spell it right. Envir, am I wrong on that? Uh, post, oh, sorry, no, I'm getting my game engines mixed up. Post process volume, for example, if you go ahead and create one of these in your scene, you will notice under here you have various different settings for, for example, if I go to ambient occlusion, somewhere, ambient occlusion, we have uh, settings there that control it. We go to ray trace global illumination. You've got configuration settings here. Ray traced ambient occlusion settings are available here. So we can change those out or we can turn it on and then change them out. Like so. Um, so ray tracing is basically built into various different objects that are available. And I'll link this down below. Uh, but truth of the matter is this piece of documentation is ideal. It basically shows you where the settings for configuring real-time ray tracing come into place. So you see you've got a number of different settings in the post-process volume um, and then what they do. And then we've got the various different lights. So directional lights, as we saw, a point and spotlight has um, settings that are controlling real-time ray tracing like so. Uh, we got rect light, skylight, and then actors have visible in ray tracing configuration. So as long as you're running in DXR mode, you turn ray tracing on, you turn skinning on, do the reboot, and you weather the storm of crashes that the driver is going to give you. So it wasn't Unreal Engine that was crashing. It was the GeForce driver that crashed. Eventually, the answer is ultimately yes, you can do ray tracing in Unreal Engine 4.22 using an older generation GeForce car. Now, do you want to? <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out. I actually haven't had a lot of experience with it yet for what it does performance and ramifications and issues and side effects of playing around with ray trace settings. Um, but it is cool now that you, know, you can actually enable these things uh, for potentially your customers or for people that you know are, are dealing with it and if they have the, the computers to handle it. And you, you can do it now. Plus, you can use, if your game is running at 120 frames per second and you find areas where a ray trace light makes more sense, well, you might as well burn up some of those frames per second that you're not using anyway. So uh, it's cool. You don't necessarily have to upgrade to a newest gen card to do development using real-time ray tracing now, and I'm very happy for that fact. Um, now, again, as you saw from this video, and perhaps it's just my experience only, uh, but the drivers still have a ways to go. Uh, but uh, it seems to work just fine in Unreal Engine. And I honestly, I can't think of any other game engines out there right now that actually support real-time ray tracing to test with today. Uh, CryEngine made announcements, but they never actually shipped anything. Um, the high-def render pipeline with ray tracing support in uh, Unity isn't coming until Q3 or Q4 of 2019. So this is the only ray tracing option I can think of other than to get into code. Uh, but it is cool to see that it does seemingly work on 10 series cards as long as it's a 1060 or higher and six gigs or more. Um, and it, it's pretty, pretty seamless. There's not really any work done. You're just kind of configuring your lighting to work in a slightly different way. And uh, yeah, yeah. so welcome to ray tracing, people. I, I don't know. Uh, if its performance is going to actually be worth using, but it is at least cool to find out that we can use it at all. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.